Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. This is Bucket Ponds, and my name is Terry. Thanks for joining us. It's nice to see you again. Uh, today I'm going to do an update video on uh, my projects out here. And uh, not too many people watch these, but uh, I still like making them, and it helps me to see like how far we've come. So uh, yeah, we're just going to walk around. I'm going to show you some things, what's going on out here. And uh, we're going to have a little discussion. I'm going to show you some of the ponds. So it's been a while um, since our last uh, channel update video, and things have changed out here a little bit. We have some uh, nice water taro plants. I have some potted, I have some growing nearby. And our banana plant is actually alive. It shot a little leaf out, surprisingly. Uh, I had two banana plants, and I thought they were both dead. But uh, we have a good, good sign there. It's starting to come back. Uh, in my area, this uh, Virginia spiderwort has really uh, made its appearance this time of year. Uh, this time of year, uh, the Virginia spiderwort, this might be Ohio spiderwort, I'm not sure, uh, but it grows native here. It's all over the place in my area, and I've been collecting it, transplanting it, spreading it around my ponds and such. Uh, but it's doing really well. Lots of flowers. Very nice. And uh, I just love this stuff. It's not some ornamental plant from uh, the Amazon or anything like that. But it's meant to be here, as far as I can tell. And it grows really well. So I'm not going to resist it. I'm actually using it, spreading it around. Uh, but this is related to my purple heart and to my day flower. They're in the same plant family. It's very easy to grow. And it seems to do well with my projects. Oh, we have some spider plants there, and of course you've seen my ponds, my bucket ponds. That one's doing really well. There's so much pond weed in there, <laughs> it's amazing. And I have some unknown plants here as well. There's a sago palm in there, it's still growing, very slowly. But here's my, uh, my ditch pond that I dug out with a shovel and a spade. I lined it with some plastic. The duckweed isn't growing in there as well as I'd hoped. Uh, but we have some growth. We have some water lettuce and some other things going on in there. There are some mosquito fish in there as well. Um, not for uh, any real purpose other than mosquito control. At some point, you know, I didn't want my neighbors to say like, oh, I'm breeding mosquitoes over here, you know, causing trouble. Um, so, you know, I wanted to uh, switch over to projects that were larger, uh, that had fish inside, that actively eat the mosquito larva, and uh, yeah, that's a good thing. I've had some people uh, chew me out online about keeping mosquito fish, uh, because, oh, they're so invasive and such, but um, where I live, they are native. These are eastern mosquito fish, and they are meant to be here, so of course, I'm going to raise them. I'm going to keep them. They're very easy to breed once you know what you're doing. But I've, uh, I've lined the pond with some large boulders that I found uh, abandoned in a ditch <laughs> nearby. We have some amaryllis plants as well, right there. And of course, we have tons of rattlesnake weed. This stuff has taken over. It surpassed my day flower. And um, all those flowers are all rattlesnake weed. I've actually cut it down a couple times and composted a large portion of it. And it just comes right back. So uh, I'm not going to fight it. I'm actually happy to have this stuff. It's great cover for my uh, knolls and my uh, other pets that live here. We have some uh, unknown weeds as well. I do occasionally get out here and cut a lot of this stuff down. But, you know, I'm not too worried about it. I'm not trying to grow... Uh, a certain crop or anything, you know. There's some more of my spider work. This started as just a few little stems. There's some purple heart down there as well. But this stuff is so easy to grow. I love it. I mean, it's it's great. 
we have an old scrub cactus here. Uh, I'm brightening this up a little bit. Uh, I just planted that in the dirt, and that's all I had to do. It started growing all by itself, and it's very easy to take care of. We have, of course, uh, more water taro nearby. Though I suspect that might actually be an elephant ear. I believe it is. Yes, that's actually a elephant ear. This is water taro. You can see a slight difference in the leaf shape. Uh, there's another pond, full of pond weed. This stuff's growing really well nowadays. Uh, but this is something I've been wanting to show you guys on the channel. Uh, if you may remember some of my old videos, I collected some giant reed, and I worked with it pretty heavily. Um, <laughs> when you collect giant reed, I took stem cuttings, and a few of them did survive, luckily, but... um. It turns out that those stem cuttings never really grew. They grew taller, but not in the way that I wanted. And then one day we hit some kind of a, a threshold with root growth, and it shot out this bad boy. This is a real giant reed stem. The other ones you've seen on my channel were all stunted um, stems. They were just stunted plants, but they were growing roots. Once we got it to root, it started growing these really, really tall plants. These are giant reed stems. And one day, that'll be 20 foot tall. Very soon, actually. It's growing rapidly. And uh, we're at the point now where secondary stems are starting to grow. That's a styrofoam cooler that used to be my old uh, vermiculture uh, earthworm bin. <laughs> but I gave up on the earthworms after a while because there's just so many out here. I don't need to raise them. This secondary giant reed stem actually busted through the styrofoam and started growing. That's about two weeks of growth there, and that's insane. This bad boy is getting tall quickly, and uh, this stuff, I love it so much. I've seen uh, where I collected it from, they've mowed it down three or four times, it grows right back. Um, if you have giant reed, you have to eradicate the roots. I, of course, would never do that. I want giant reed. It's beautiful. It's a Rundo Donax. And I'm very happy to see these new stems growing. Now, mixed in with the uh, rattlesnake weed, if you look closely, you'll see a bunch of Wedelia. That's creeping oxi. And I collected that a couple years ago, and I brought it home. Pretty much everything you see here, literally everything that you see here, um, I collected from the wild from old abandoned houses, uh, forgotten farms, and places like that. You know, old gardens and things that people had just gave up on, moved away. Uh, my water taro actually came from a city drainage ditch in a nearby city. Uh, but I brought it all home, and I've, I've got it growing, and I love it so much. All this stuff, you know, I didn't buy any of this online. I've cultivated this myself. I brought it home. I've got it growing. I've made more and more and more. And it's such a great feeling. I don't know what these are, but they grow, uh, they're growing really well, you know, by themselves. I'm not sure. I'm hoping they make a flower so I can finally identify them. Some kind of a lily or a bulb plant. Um, this is my uh, fruit container. It's actually a large basket for picking fruit from like an orange grove or something, but I found it off in the woods one day and I brought it home. And uh, we filled it with all sorts of stuff and we've actually made a beautiful habitat for the local wildlife, the lizards, the anoles, and skinks. And I have some great news about the skinks I'm gonna show you here in just a minute. But you can see we have some spider plants, some water taro, some of our bucket ponds are in here. And I don't have any fish in here, but I do have a large number of other animals and creatures that live within this place. It's a little messy, I admit. I have a lot of projects out here. And uh, here's a look at a couple of the skinks that I mentioned. These are broad-headed skinks, and they're pretty large. It's a male on the left and a female on the right. And they're definitely uh, in the middle of mating season right now. And uh, they're just hanging around my ponds, and I think that's pretty cool. I'm very happy to have them. They're pretty large, pretty big, and uh, 
I'm not a big clean freak. But there's almost always a couple tree frogs living in these, these holes here. And I originally, I wanted to patch the holes in this and make it into a large pond. Uh, but that didn't go as planned. So instead, we've grown plants here. We have Purple Heart, Creeping Jenny. Um, there's another banana plant. And right there, those are yellow garden spider eggs. And I'm still waiting for them to hatch. You may remember our pet spider, Wanda, who uh, unfortunately died uh, a while back. <coughs> She was, of course, a wild animal, and, you know, birds and lizards and things, they eat insects, they eat arachnids and spiders, so it happens. But she laid a number of eggs for us, and we're still waiting for them to hatch. That's them right there, that weird little ball. And there's another, and there's actually another in those plants, which is the main reason that I haven't trimmed up that banana tree. I believe this banana plant uh, may be dead. Who's to say? It might grow back. Either way, once those eggs hatch, I will be trimming up this plant and removing a bunch of those wilted leaves. Some more Wedelia there, growing up behind the container. I love my Wedelia, it's pretty cool. We have here a whole bunch of spiderwort. This stuff actually lived through the winter right here. And that was a great sign. This was my first test for this spiderwort plant. A lot of people would consider it an, a weed, you know, an ugly plant, but I love it. It makes these nice flowers. It attracts bees and all sorts of pollinators. And it's just grown so, so thick and tall. I have here some moss. Some uh, hypnum or sphagnum moss. I can't rightly tell. I think it's hypnum moss, but I collected this from my day job, actually, and brought it home. And I've got some in some water as well. Some growing down there. I'm trying to transplant some wisteria here. But uh, I don't know much about wisteria, so, you know, we're, we're trying, but we're not too worried about it. If it happens, it happens. But I wanted to show you the pool pond. Check it out. Still growing really well. I've separated a number of spiderwort plants into individual stems and planted them around the... Uh, perimeter of the pond. We have some giant elephant ears in the pond. Uh, if you've seen the setup video, you'll know what I included in here. But we have giant elephant ears. We have water taro that's just growing really, really well. It's, it's created so many new plants. We have here, look at that. That's a brand new dragonfly hatched right out of my pond. Isn't that cool? He's climbed up there, emerged from his exoskeleton, become a true dragonfly, and it looks like now he's uh, getting ready to... Uh... And it looks like he's getting ready to uh, take to the skies. That's really cool. Check him out. I don't want to scare him. But that's really nifty. Yeah. See, when you build a pond like this, it's important to incorporate some emergent plants. I learned over time uh, with my bucket ponds uh, that dragonflies will emerge when they're ready to become adults. And if they don't have something to climb up, they will actually fall back into the water and drown. We don't want that to happen. So uh, these emergent plants, they've really helped. And uh, that's probably our first dragonfly to be born in the pond. That's really, really cool. Now the pond itself is a bit overgrown. We have some pond scum algae on top with a, uh, a pretty good amount of filamentous algae beneath the surface, but that's okay. You know, I'm not going to fight the algae. I might remove it. <coughs> it turns out the uh, pond scum is very useful as a fertilizer ingredient in compost. It's high in phosphorus and nitrogen and it breaks down very quickly when composted. So I might take some of that and uh, use it to make soil for my future aquariums and projects. Yep, 
If you look really closely, you'll see a six-spotted fishing spider here. He's moved into this pond, and uh, I've actually seen the same spider hanging around here pretty much every day. So uh, that's pretty nifty. I'm not too worried about, uh, you know, if he catches a fish or anything. Um, our mosquito fish in here are breeding now, and that's pretty pretty useful too. I, I'm using the mosquito fish to limit any uh, mosquitoes and uh, unwanted insects that may be breeding in my pond. There's my large female. Uh, that's a eastern mosquito fish, and uh, she was born in my refrigerator pond. And I've transferred her and a few males over to the uh, pool pond here uh, after it was set up after a week or two. And I went ahead and added the fish. And they are breeding now. There's some fry in here as well. I also added a couple uh, endler guppies just on the off chance that, uh, you know, the mosquito fish didn't work out. Maybe the endlers would. Uh, but they're doing really well. And uh, she's actively searching for food right now. So I'll have to uh, throw some uh, fish flakes in there help them out a little bit uh, but I love my fish and uh, they are an excellent mosquito control mechanism and I'm just happy to have them you know uh, I've decided to switch over to larger projects uh, large enough to house fish I, I do enjoy my bucket ponds but uh, there was a crucial flaw with them and I just could not run too many fish in them you know it just didn't work out it wasn't large enough in my opinion and uh, yeah I need fish to control the mosquito population in nature, a pond like this would probably have some mosquito fish in it, so uh, I think it works out well. And uh, it's hard to see them with the camera, but uh, I got a couple clips here and there, so I'm pretty happy about that. Uh, I'm also going to have some uh, some photos at the end of the video. A fan sent me some photos, and I want to share them with you guys, uh, but we'll save that for the very end for a little shout out. So the mosquito fish, they have the added benefit of literally eating mosquito larvae. They also breed uh, extremely well outdoors. Um, all they need is some water, some plants. You know, there's no pumps or filters in here. And I'm able to breed my guppies. They're basically guppies. Uh, but I'm able to breed them in here. And they're very easy to take care of. I do add a little fish food here and there. But for a all-natural, no pump, no filtration, no fertilizer tank here, outdoor pond it's beautiful and I can't be happier we have no mosquito problems here we have beautiful plants and everything is growing just like I said it would I'll include a link to the setup video for this pond in the description but I bet a lot of people thought I was uh, just messing around I had no idea what I was doing well check that out that's just beautiful some of the spiderwort stems that I talked about. There's another. Some purple heart cuttings I planted out here. They're not doing too well, the purple heart isn't. But uh, the other plants are. I'm just going to pluck that right there. This is a small elephant ear. And one day it'll grow large, but for now it's, it's tiny. And again, there's the difference between elephant ears. You see how that V shape goes all the way to the stem in the middle? And here's a water taro plant where the V-shape stops an inch or so away from the stem. So that's one way to identify them. There's a smaller um, fishing spider there as well. That's really cool to see two of them together. That means they'll probably be breeding out here soon. And I don't know too much about them. But I'm a big fan of arachnids in general, and uh, I'm happy to see them out here. So in five minutes, just walking out here looking at the pond, we have dragonflies, spiders, our uh, beautiful, <laughs> tiny, uh, guppy uh, mosquito fish. They're basically guppies. They're in the same family. Here's some more giant reed cuttings. And once again, we had the same thing happening. We hit a certain threshold with root growth, and it caused new stems to grow. Now, these ones aren't as big or as well-established as my others, uh, but they're here, and they will be tall one day. Giant reeds, 
giant elephant ears. It's going to be a beautiful pond as time goes on. There's some creeping jenny. Um, this is the only plant that I bought a long time ago. I bought some at Home Depot and I've just been growing it at home. Um, yeah, my goal is to eventually, uh, once all these plants grow big and tall and add a lot of cover, I'm going to plant my creeping jenny around most of the pond. But for now we have some right here, just growing naturally. We have some old unknown weed plants here. I, I don't know what they are, but I don't worry about it too much. Some more spider work. I love this stuff. It's very easy to take care of. Some giant elephant ears with a brand new leaf forming. Also, I threw some moss out here in the hopes that that'll grow and slowly spread and we won't have to go collect moss anymore. We'll be able to just have some, you know, have it here at home. That's water lettuce if you look closely there. These are my water lettuce plants um, collected from a lake here uh, in the town where I live. It's considered an invasive plant, but no one really knows where water lettuce evolved. They don't know where it came from, so they can't really call it invasive because it's most likely natural. It's been found fossilized in my area, so I'm not too worried about that being invasive. I believe it's meant to be here. A rain tree flourishing once again. I've trimmed it here and there. But things are going really well outside, guys. Over here we have my over here we have my refrigerator pond with a few more elephant ears. Uh, the fridge pond actually has a, a hole in it that allows it to drain and uh, the runoff comes over here and waters the elephant ears. Kind of a cooperative uh, system here. But these elephant ears are doing great. They're getting big. And I have large hands, so there's a good size comparison. We have a ton of mosquito fish in here as well. And, uh, yeah, we have a little bit of a protein layer on the surface. But that's okay. The mosquito fish are very active. They consume any kind of food that falls into here. Any little bugs that try to breed. And, uh... I just step back for a second, you might see the water. Yeah, every little little movement you see there, that's a mosquito fish. That's pretty cool. They're all very active in there. I need to come out and feed them. I do add a little fish food here and there, uh, but generally they live off of uh, insects and things that fall into the tank, into the pond. This is literally an old refrigerator. I threw a liner in it, but the liner wasn't really necessary in retrospect. This is all uh, some kind of pondweed, as near as I can tell. I think it's floating leaf pondweed. When I originally collected it, it didn't look like this at all. It was like a, a lot of branches that floated on top of the water. But here it's, it's become like a standing plant, an emergent plant, and I think that's pretty cool. Love my fridge pond. I'll include a, a link to the setup for this as well. This is one of my more popular videos, so I like to show it occasionally. Uh, but the fish are doing well. I know we can't see them too much, <laughs> but uh, that's okay. They're they're very fast, and they're somewhat skittish. They are wild fish originally. I collected them from a pond nearby and uh, started breeding them. They won't breed indoors, but they'll breed out here. And uh, that's good enough for me. I love it out here, guys. Uh, I couldn't have asked for a much better place to set up my projects. But there's our channel update. And uh, for those of you that choose to watch these, I am very grateful. For everybody that watches my stuff, uh, of course, thank you for your time. So before we go, I wanted to uh, take a look at some photos that I found in the Bucket Ponds email account, uh, which I haven't checked in a while, I'll be honest, but I'm checking it now. And it's linked in the description if you have anything you want to share with me or have uh, posted on the channel, potentially. Uh, but our buddy Jay here said that he used to make Bucket Ponds, a lot like ours, and uh, he was attempting to uh, return everything to the wild and give up on the hobby, which is very unfortunate. 
Uh, but he sent some really cool photos. Let's check those out. Uh, first of all, Jay, man, uh, I want to let you know it's very dangerous to get this close to an alligator. Um, I'm impressed with your photography and where you're collecting your, your stuff. I mean, I would love to have some of this nearby. Uh, there are some gators where I live, but not like this, man. Um, be very careful, you guys, if you're out there collecting or uh, playing with ponds and stuff. Watch out for alligators. <laughs> I have to say this, just so no one gets hurt, be careful. Um, but I appreciate the cool photos, Jay, and I'm glad to give you a shout out here, man. Very cool. I'm um, sorry to hear that you're quitting on the hobby, but uh, it's definitely, uh, it's interesting, you know, the stuff that you sent, and I appreciate it. It's cool to hear from a fan instead of all the hatred that we see on YouTube. And I hear some plants that he was also showing. I want to give another shout out to one of our, uh, our best fans, our best commenters on the channel here, Damon. Uh, dude, you're always commenting on the videos, man. I appreciate it. I hope you don't mind the shout out. And um, always cool to hear from you, man. Uh, a lot of those comments are negative, you know. So it's cool to see some positivity and some, some cool people like us out there. Uh, so that's it, guys. That's the video. That's the channel update. Um, this is Bucket Ponds. My name's Terry. I'm so glad to share this stuff with you. You guys have uh, encouraged me to keep going, to build more projects, all kinds of cool stuff. Our pets are breeding. Our plants are growing. We have dragons hanging around the ponds. Uh, we got spiders on the water. Oh man, everything's amazing, and uh, this stuff just brings a lot of peace and uh, happiness to my heart. So uh, my name's Terry, this is Bucket Ponds, please like and subscribe if you enjoy the video, and I'll see you next time. I upload a video every Friday. Um, I was making a new jar aquarium every Friday, <laughs> but I'm running out of space for all these tanks. So uh, we're going to do some updates and some other things here and there as well. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.